Hello and welcome. All right, guys. Um, happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy Tuesday. This is my first episode. Yay. Um, <laughs> first episode ever. Uh, this first episode, um, I really, you know, the idea for this channel was conceived months ago, right? Months ago. And at the time, I was traveling around a lot, and, you know, I, this channel was, I mean, it was kind of like, I don't know, I mean, at the time, I was living a different life, and, it, you know, I, I still think my life is interesting, and I still think I can make it into something, and so, yeah, I mean, finally here, first episode, finally, on St. Patrick's Day. And, you know, I don't know if, I didn't even really feel like I was ready to go yet, but, you know, fuck it, it's St. Patrick's Day, so I decided, yeah, I mean, I'm doing it one way or another. Oh, excuse me. Ooh. Yeah, and, you know, like, I kept moving the workspace around, you know, like, at first it was supposed to be in my art studio, and then, you know, my art studio is so cluttered right now, it would take forever to clear out. So we're in my office, I mean... You know, there could be worse places to record. The lighting's nice in here and everything else, so... Whatever. Uh, and, you know, like, originally, I had this really cool tagline in my head. Like, this was supposed to be a channel of art and substance abuse. Right? <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm sniffling. Uh, this was supposed to be a channel of art and substance abuse. Uh, because I love art and I love drinking. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, and so you were going to see a little bit of both. <laughs> uh, but now, I mean, intentions have shifted a little bit. Uh, there is still going to be art. There is still going to be <laughs> alcohol. Um, wait till later on in this video. Uh, but there is also going to be some other stuff thrown in. Uh, I just got out of a really toxic, really unhealthy really abusive relationship, and, oh my god, I'm so sorry that I keep sniffling, allergies are so bad, um, I just got out of a really unhealthy, abusive relationship, and so I think I might post some content having to do with that, because unfortunately for me, and you know, I've also seen way too many other people go through it, and so if I had to go through all that, then... Maybe I could use my knowledge to help somebody else. And, you know, like, there had to have been a reason. There had to have been a reason for me to go through all that crap. Uh, and, you know, if nothing else, maybe I can help somebody else who's already going through it. So, there's that. And there also might be some weight loss content sprinkled in here and there. Because when I got out of my relationship with my abusive ex, I... I was out shopping for jeans like a couple months after and I realized that I lost, that I went down a whole pant size without even trying. And so I figured, well, you know, if I can go down one whole pant size without even trying, then I'm going to try, you know, I'm going to actually try to lose weight. And so like there's a whole bunch of videos that are recorded and they're uploaded, but they're private. There's a whole bunch of videos like of just like what I ate in my weight loss progress and all that, that I haven't made public yet, but I think eventually down the line, I will make them public because, you know, I mean, I know there's a lot of weight loss channels out there, but, you know, maybe it'll hold me accountable and it might even help somebody else who's trying to lose weight. I don't know. And I mean, oh my God, guys, I feel like I'm so going to sneeze. I am so sorry. Oh. Yeah, there might be some jump cuts in this video, cutting out all my sniffling, and I don't know what I'm reacting to, but I'm reacting to something, and, you know, it's taken me so long to get to this point just to upload this first episode. I'm not going to not do it just because my allergies are acting up. I mean, that would be ridiculous. Oh my, I'm so sorry. But yeah, uh, I am a professional artist, and I'm also legally blind in both eyes. I know that it, I mean, you would never think that a professional artist could be legally blind in both eyes, but it's possible. I'm proof. I'm right here in front of you. Um, and speaking of artists, I just want to talk a little bit about this COVID-19 coronavirus outbreak we've got going on right now. Uh, 
I know you would never think it, but artists are really being affected by this. Artists and musicians both. I mean, I know you would never think it. You would never think that artists are the people that are suffering because of this, but we are. And uh, I'll explain to you why. I mean, for one thing, a lot of galleries are closing. And for two... Oh, my. Ugh. This is all going to be edited out. Okay. Sorry. Um, had to tend to my allergies there for a second. Uh, so... You know, a lot of art galleries are closing right now. And also, like, I live in a state where the governor has banned gatherings of over 100 people. And also shut down all the restaurants and bars. <laughs> so, yeah, and, like, even, like, a lot of the big box retailers, I mean, Walmart and all that, it's closing early right now in my state. There's a lot of cases here where I live. And so, I mean, of course, like, if you're an artist like me... Like, I've had my work in galleries and stuff, but I also, I do, like, a lot of my work, I sell a lot of my work at, like, art fairs and festivals and stuff. That's all being canceled right now, dude. Like, all of it. It's all being canceled. I had seven shows lined up for the months of April and May, and some of them were just going to be insane. I mean, some of them were just going to be amazing shows. I mean, I was supposed to work at the Hell City Festival in Columbus. And that's one that I have tried, and, like, I've wanted to get into that one for so long, and it's invitation only. I was finally lucky enough to be invited. Uh, and, it, yeah, I mean, it got postponed indefinitely. There's no rescheduled date. Uh, they haven't refunded any fees. Because, you know, when you sell at a show, you, you rent your space. And, I mean, sometimes it costs a pretty good chunk of money, uh... Several hundred dollars I paid for Hell City, and so far there haven't been any refunds. Blah, 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 sorry, so far there haven't been any refunds given out, and oh my god, I really need to blow my nose. <laughs> oh, oh my god, I'm so sorry, guys. Whew. Okay, so yeah, I mean. Some of these, like, show promoters and stuff aren't even giving out refunds. Uh. Oh. Oh my god. I'm sorry. Thank god for video editing. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Hell City was one that I was supposed to work at at the end of April, and it was indefinitely postponed, so we don't know when, uh. You know, the hotel that it was supposed to be at, they had booked for three years, and so we don't even know if there's going to be a Hell City this year. You know, I might have to wait all the way until next year. Another big event that I've done for about five years now has been canceled. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, there was an event I was going to do in Indianapolis, Indiana, that was rescheduled, but it's actually rescheduled for the same weekend as the Lost Lands Festival, which I was, like, so looking forward to. And so now I have to make the decision, well, you know, which one of these do I want to do? Uh, and, I mean, I know there are people watching this going, God damn it, you know, people are dead and all you can, like, people are dead and all you care about is your fucking shows being canceled. I mean, get the fuck real. I know there are people saying that, but, you know, also you gotta remember, this is my job. Uh, you know, this is my livelihood. Uh. You know, being an artist is what I went to college for. Like, this is all I've ever wanted to do with my life. And now I'm doing it, and, you know, now this fucking virus is stopping me from doing it. And, you know, like, right now, I have so many artist friends who don't have a safety net. I mean, there's a lot of people who can't pay their bills right now. I mean, I have a mortgage to pay. And, like, thankfully... You know, I've always hated it that I've had to work like a regular job on top of my, on top of being an artist just to supplement the income I make being an artist and just to make ends meet. Like, I've always hated that, but right now I'm thanking the gods for my other job because like, I mean, I've got a mortgage to pay and I have bills to pay and like, there's no way I would be able to do it without my like regular W2 job. And 
you know, my heart is breaking for people I know that don't have a safety net. And, you know, my heart is even breaking for the promoters, like the people that are putting on all these shows who ha- are having to deal with this. I mean, and, you know, I'm I'm one of the people who's chill about it. I mean, I understand that there's nothing that can be done about it. I mean, there's people who are just, like, flat right, like, outright fucking irate about it. And, you know, like, I cuss a lot, guys. I mean, if cussing offends you, this is not the channel for you, let me tell you. And I don't give a fuck what you think. So, <laughs> I mean, I'll continue to drop f bombs. I really don't, I don't fucking care. Uh, yeah, and my shirt says Team Satan. I don't know how well you guys can see that. Team Satan! Hail Satan! But anyway, yeah, I mean... And musicians are suffering too right now because, you know, like with bars and restaurants being shut down and with gatherings of over 100 people being banned, like how how the hell are musicians going to make any money? I mean, they can't. Uh, you know, I was... Uh, my ex-husband was a musician. I mean, I... You know, yeah, granted, we're not married anymore, and he's not a musician anymore, but, like, I, I'm i just imagining the way this would be, like, devastating him if this were to go on when he was, like, in his peak of success playing in a band. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I feel so, 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 so bad for all the artists I know who have no safety net. And I mean, yeah, you would never think that this would affect artists, but it really is affecting artists, artists and musicians. And, you know, like in troubled times like this, we need art and music. And I mean, I know that there's nothing that can be done about it. I mean, right now, fortunately, I have some amazing clients who have bought for me and I have 13 commissions out right now that I'm working on. So fortunately, you know, I'm one of the lucky ones. Thank God. Uh, but yeah. So, COVID-19, man. (laughs) I mean, I know it's wrong. I know it's probably wrong, but I am actually kind of fascinated, (laughs) like, watching this whole thing unfold, because I love apocalyptic scenarios. I love apocalyptic scenarios, and, you know, I just, I'm just wondering how far this is going to go. I mean, I wonder if they're going to declare martial law. I wonder if where I work is going to be shut down. Uh, probably not because I work in I don't work in the food industry. Food. Blah, 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 blah. Ugh. I don't work in the food service industry. I mean, I don't work in a restaurant or a bar. Um, where I work is a pretty constant. I mean, I don't see where I work closing because of this. So, and if they do, well, then that's just more time to paint and you know record YouTube videos and stuff like that. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, so I've talked about my intentions for this channel. I've talked about what's currently going on with the coronavirus. You know, I kind of want to invite some people over and drink Corona and play Pandemic. I mean, seriously. (laughs) How cool would that be? Alright, so, without further ado, because I'm Absinthal, and did I explain... Did I explain why I'm called Absinthal? I don't remember if I did or not. Uh, but yeah, the reason I'm called Absinthal, just in case I didn't explain it, is because every other fucking name I could think of was taken. Every name I could think of was taken. Every single fucking name I could think of was taken. Uh, and it, sometimes when I'm having a hard time coming up with a username or whatever, I look at what's sitting around me. And use that for inspiration. And at the time when I was trying to come up with a name for my YouTube channel, there was this absinthe sign that I bought from a guy at a show. And it's it's supposed to look like it's from Victorian times. I don't think it actually is. But it looks like it is. And then there was also this creepy doll sitting there that a friend of mine made. An artist friend. And she gave to me. So I became absinthe doll. <laughs> and so, without further ado, I'm going to drink some absinthe. <laughs> I mean, it's St. Patrick's Day, you know, fuck it, why not? And you know, it's funny and ironic because absinthe is traditionally a green drink, and this is black absinthe, but oh well, I have green hair, so, (laughs) and so I've got some black absinthe for St. Patrick's Day in this really cool skull bottle. This was shipped from Germany, right? And it was not cheap. And yeah, I know the bottle's open, and... There's a whole story behind that. Maybe I'll tell it one day. Maybe I won't. 
but this is still the first time I'm trying it, and you guys get to see that on camera. All right, so it came from Germany, and I had it shipped to my abusive ex's house because because I've had packages come up missing off my porch. So I had it shipped to his house. He lives out in the sticks. And get this, all right, so this abusive asshole, whiny little bitch boy, he was really pissed off and really upset with me because they knocked on his door at 9 a.m. to deliver it and got his sorry ass out of bed. Um, <laughs> 9 a.m., seriously. He was upset about being woke up at 9 a.m. Uh, okay, at 9 a.m., I'm already, like, halfway through my work day, right? Like, I've been slinging steel, and, you know, at 9 a.m., I'm already, like, out there rocking it. I mean, oh, boo-hoo, you got woke up at 9 a.m. Like, he doesn't have a regular job. Uh, he sells crystals. He sells crystals and, like, smudging supplies and, you know, stuff like that, like, that's his job. Like, his whole job is to sell crystals and smudging supplies. Like, he doesn't have, like, okay, you know, I spent, I bust ass painting paintings, and I also sling steel. I work in the fucking automotive industry. And, you know, here he is whining about being woke up at 9 a.m. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> this woke him up at 9 a.m., and now I'm going to try it on camera for you guys. Black Absinthe, purchased from Alondia. I will put a link in the description if you guys want to buy your own. It's Hamlet Hardcore. It's called The Shot of Death. It came with these adorable skull shot glasses. And I don't know if I'm going to fill the whole glass up because that is a, a lot of drink. I mean, it's a pretty big glass, you know. I mean... Just for scale, holding it up to my face. That's a pretty big glass, and I don't know if I'm going to fill the whole thing up, because this is 69% alcohol, y'all. I mean, yeah, it is St. Patrick's Day, but I have to work tomorrow, so. Alright, let's open this up. Oh, I hope that that popping sound came through on camera. I don't know how well you guys heard that, but it was such a satisfying noise. Okay, I'm going to take a little tape. Not bad. Not bad at all. Gonna pour some of this. I did not fill up the glass. I will fully admit I did not fill up the glass. I don't give a fuck if it's St. Patrick's Day. I have to work tomorrow, and that's a lot of absinthe. This is 69% alcohol. I mean, <laughs> if I would have filled it up, like, that's, that's a lot, you know? That's a lot. I have to work tomorrow. <laughs> Um, and I mean, I know this is black absinthe, but it's actually a very beautiful shade of purple. Um, it matches my bandana and it kind of matches my lipstick too. Uh, I love these skull shot glasses. That is like so freaking cool looking. I mean, it's just a really cool looking effect when you pour it into the glass. So... Just a little bit about this off the website. Okay, so to be or not to be, one of the most famous quotes from the play Hamlet could also describe it, Hamlet hardcore black absinthe. 69% alcohol and contains real wormwood. We recommend that you do not drink it straight, like I'm totally about to do, unless you want to experience the shot of death, which I totally do. I totally want to experience the shot of death. I totally want to experience the shot of death. It's St. Patrick's Day. It is St. Patrick's Day, and maybe this will kill my fucking allergies, like whatever's making me sniffle right now. I swear to God. All right, so without further ado, cheers. Oh my, oh my, oh my. I need some water. <laughs> oh. oh my god, my lips are tingling, my tongue is tingling, my throat is tingling. It feels kind of nice. It feels kind of nice until it gets to about like right there. <laughs> 
it feels nice until it gets to like my titties. <laughs> Like, the T on my shirt, once it gets into the T zone, then it feels kind of weird. Um, but yeah, like, my lips are tingling and my tongue is tingling. And it just kind of, like, tingles all the way down. And it feels really nice until it gets to, like, my chest. Then it just feels weird and overwhelming. As far as the taste, it is actually quite delicious. Um, I don't want to say it tastes like licorice. Like, I can't really explain the flavor. I hate licorice. Like, I absolutely fucking hate licorice. It does not taste like licorice. Um, I can't really, yeah, I mean, I can't really explain what it tastes like. It's good, though. I mean, it is very good. Uh, yeah, you know, I figure for my next episode, I'm gonna drink it more traditionally, like, poured over sugar cubes, and the other day I was cleaning out my cupboards, and I totally found some sugar cubes. It was, oh, fantastic. I totally found some sugar cubes. And, it, you know, they're not even, like, real cubes. They're kind of like sugar balls, and they're raw sugar, so I don't know where they came from. I, <laughs> like, I think, I don't know if my roommate left them here. I mean, my roommate who used to live here, he was, like, really into absinthe, and so they might be his that he left here. I don't know. Uh, if they are, Donnie's gonna care if I steal, like, one sugar cube. Ooh, that's strong. <laughs> 69% alcohol, y'all. <laughs> I'm not a lightweight, but yeah, that's that's strong. I mean, it's St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> so, yay. Uh, and I am I am Irish. I do have some Irish ancestry. <laughs> Whoo, okay. <laughs> it feels nice. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I, that is my first episode. Uh, I wish I could, I wish I had, like, a cool outro. Um. Unfortunately, I don't have a cool outro. Uh, how about this? Don't, uh, if you don't want to get the coronavirus, then drink absinthe. Because, <laughs> you know, I guarantee I'm not getting the coronavirus after drinking this. Uh, so yeah, drink absinthe and you won't get the coronavirus. Uh, so yeah, uh, stay safe and happy, uh, Happy Tuesday, happy St. Patrick's Day, and yeah, uh, yay, this is the end of my first episode. I'm so excited, I can't wait to film another episode for you guys. You never know what'll transpire from then until now, I mean, yeah, it's St. Patrick's Day right now, you guys probably won't see this until Thursday. I won't get it uploaded tonight, and tomorrow I have to get my taxes done, because I'm a business owner. And I have to get my taxes done by an accountant because I'm just not confident in myself enough to do them. So, yeah, uh, drink plenty of absinthe and don't get the coronavirus. That, that, that's my outro for now. And I will be seeing you guys later and have a good night. Bye-bye.